Hi, I'm Giri Prakash from The Federal. And today's uh, Big Money, we will discuss the issue of how a sudden windfall of money can actually result in a situation where most uh, people end up squandering their gains, unless, of course, you manage the windfall properly. Today, we have with us uh, Harish Menon, a chartered accountant and the co-founder of House of Alpha, which is a heavy registered uh, fee-only financially financial advisory firm, uh, and it works with uh, senior corporate executives and business owners and helps them to identify, achieve, and maintain uh, their desired lifestyle without the fear of uh, ever running out of money or living behind too much. Uh, Mr. Manan, I took this out of your LinkedIn profile. Um, thank, you, thank you very much for uh, coming on to the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me here. My yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Um, so the today's discussion is about how uh, a, a windfall or a mini windfall it could be out of physical sale of physical asset it could be like like for example an apartment or a major LIC policy uh, getting matured or the money left behind by parents or relatives it could even be uh, stock options uh, getting exercised. So uh, you know my first question would be uh, the the the. Uh, when when usually people get this kind of money, obviously uh, they they do know that uh, these things might happen. But what exactly happens when they get this kind of money, and uh, what is the first thing that they need to do? Right. So uh, a lot of issues that they would typically face when they get into a windfall is more emotional than financial. The financial mm -hmm. issues will come up only later in terms of what to be done. But the first mm -hmm. thing which usually happens is emotional. I mean, someone mm -hmm. who has only seen thousands or maybe few lakhs in the bank account suddenly sees, mm -hmm. let's say, a big amount it can mm -hmm. result in some kind of emotional swings in terms of mm -hmm. what to do and fear and expectations and all that. And mm -hmm. on top of that, what will eventually happen <clears> is they will start getting a lot of unsolicited advice. And most mm. of this unsolicited advice would come in the form of product sellers. So mm. the moment the money hits the bank account, as we all know that there will be alerts which will go into the system of a lot of relationship managers of your bank. So let's assume okay. that your bank with XYZ bank, suddenly your mm -hmm. account is hit with few big amounts. And mm -hmm. the first alert goes to the relationship manager who's like, okay, here is a savings bank account or a current account with mm -hmm. so-and-so large money. So the first thing mm -hmm. they will do is they'll start calling you. So okay, this okay. happens effectively in the same day when the money gets credited. You start getting calls and most mm -hmm. of these calls are to just sell products. And it can be okay. super confusing. You're going through an emotional ride at the first place and then suddenly you're mixing up a lot of things. So the first thing that I would advise to anyone who's going through this is A, do not take any major decisions for some time. Don't mm -hmm. get into any quick decisions about what to do with this money. It will need a lot mm -hmm. of planning, which I'll, which I'll, which will be needed. But at this point, the idea is not to take major decisions and not to mm -hmm. get into this conversations where people are asking you to take quick decisions. And that the first set of conversation will come from these relationship managers who have targets mm -hmm. to achieve and they're going to sell you a lot of products, which you may not need at all. So the first practical actionable, what I would suggest is move all the money from your bank account to a liquid fund. Straight, okay. simple. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. the bank account doesn't have all this money lying around. And okay. you kind of keep getting these calls from relationship managers who will give you these logics of, you know, don't keep this money here. It is not, it is not good. Mm. Invest mm. in this product quickly. This is good. This is that. And you're going through a lot already. So quickly move yeah. the money to liquid funds. It will do two mm -hmm. things. One, the bank account relationship managers will not have access to this. They will not know that mm -hmm. this money is there. B, mm -hmm. you will not have this urge to just spend money on something. The money has already gone okay. to liquid funds. It is giving you much more than a normal savings account or a current account. So you're already earning more on that money that you have. Yeah. And yeah. after yeah. this, only do whatever. And it will need, obviously, some steps and planning. But first things, get out of this trap which you're going to get into of a lot of people calling you, which uh, the I mean, you have to understand where the information is going, right? Who's going to get to know about this? The bank mm -hmm. will get to know about this and their relationship managers call a lot mm -hmm. with their targets, mm -hmm. with their mm -hmm. selling propositions, which may not be good for you. So to 
Mm-hmm. Buy you some peace, get the money mm-hmm. into liquid funds. The better mm-hmm. advantage is liquid funds will give you more money, more returns anyway. So this is the first okay. step I would advise to anybody. So when you say liquid fund, you mean fixed deposit, is it? No, uh, liquid exactly funds are mutual fund? funds. Mutual funds. Oh, you, mutual you, funds you have mean to say the entire quality. amount, you should go and buy a mutual fund straight away. Yeah, liquid funds. So liquid funds are ultra short duration funds where you can park the money for as less as few days to as much okay. as long term. And they don't mm-hmm. take capital risk. They are not mm-hmm. going to invest that money in highly risky bonds or anything like that. They will invest in mm-hmm. very short term bonds, short term securities mm-hmm. where you will mm-hmm. not have capital risk. The oh. second mm-hmm. advantage of liquid funds over fixed deposits. So the same as you rightly said, why not FD? Why not put all the money mm-hmm. in FD? FDs usually mm-hmm. have a term. So if you park in a six month FD, you're blocking the money for six months. Liquid funds, mm-hmm. you can redeem the money any day without mm-hmm. any liquidity issue and you will get all the money back in one day. So by parking okay. the money into liquid funds, what you're mm-hmm. essentially doing is you're buying some time for yourself mm-hmm. to decide what to do with that money without mm-hmm. losing on the opportunity cost or okay. without okay. losing on the liquidity. So there are two important things. One is returns, the other is liquidity. So if your mm-hmm. money is in savings account, liquidity is high, mm-hmm. but the returns may not be mm-hmm. that good. So liquid mm-hmm. funds kind of checks all these boxes. The best thing to do is park there. Then from there mm-hmm. you decide. So let's assume you want to later on give a part of this money to let's say charity, for example. That's fine. You mm-hmm. redeem the liquid fund. Money will come to your account mm-hmm. next day. You do whatever mm-hmm. you want. But at least for now, you're investing mm-hmm. the money in a safe, liquid, relatively mm-hmm. higher returns than savings account kind of a product. So, uh, you know, before doing that, I think one of the biggest fears uh, a customer face. So, so somebody who just received this uh, windfall is that what if the government takes away that as income tax? I think that crosses your mind right away, saying that my money is not safe. Suddenly, uh, somebody will uh, knock at my door and saying, God, this money you need to pay first uh, tax on that. So uh, what do you do for that? So the government doesn't wait for the money to hit your account. They start collecting tax much before that because the government is not going to trust that, oh, you will get the money and then you'll be a good uh, citizen and then you will pay tax. So that is why Mm. in our Mm. country, we have a provision called tax deducted at source, TDS. Okay. Okay. So whatever is the windfall, let's say you won lottery. On that lottery amount, you're supposed to pay tax, which will be deducted as TDS. So the payer, the person okay. who's going to pay you already deducts the tax. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then okay. everything else will essentially be given out. So that's the first part. TDS may be collected okay. in some cases. Second, okay. even if you mm-hmm. get this income in whatever form, the income tax is mm-hmm. not going to come to you next day. They may okay. be alerted. They may be alerted mm-hmm. by the bankers because they have a mm-hmm. good database now that this high value transaction has happened in this particular account and the mm-hmm. pan is this. So they know it. Mm-hmm. And then they mm-hmm. will track it when you file the ITR, income tax returns. Because we are not okay. supposed to pay the tax tomorrow when <coughs> you get an income. We have a proper yeah, concept that. of income that. tax. And yeah. We have advanced tax and all that, right? So they mm-hmm. will assume that you will follow all that procedure. If you don't, they already know that this mm-hmm. amount hit your account. Then they mm-hmm. may send a notice that, you filed your ITR, but it doesn't show this income that you saw. So what is okay. it? I want to know explanation. So that will all happen later. As of now, nothing will happen. You will get the amount. If there was a mm-hmm. TDS, that will already be deducted. You can claim it okay. later. Now the money mm-hmm. is sitting in the bank account. And that's the mm-hmm. only practical thing you will go to. Uh, one thing that I found out is in this some of these uh, banking apps. Uh, as soon as you get some amount of money, you can actually... Uh, use the app to transfer the money to fixed deposit and then also uh, remove it two days later, three days. You won't get your interest, but, you know, sort of being safe there. Uh, Is that a good alternative? Uh, That's number one. Number two, when you talk about liquid fund, uh, at that moment of time, how does one know that uh, uh, which mutual fund to pick up, number one? Number two, whether everything should go into debt fund. Okay, so I'll go one by one. First, there mm-hmm. are, as you rightly said, sweep in fixed deposits, sweep in accounts, which means yeah. the amount yeah. automatically goes into FD. Uh, mm-hmm. It will solve two problems. One is it mm-hmm. will probably give you higher rate of return than savings account or current account. Mm-hmm. So you're earning a mm-hmm. little more. Second, mm-hmm. it is still liquid. You can take it mm-hmm. out whenever you want. 
but it will not solve the third problem, which is you will start getting calls to buy a lot mm. of products because the bank mm. still mm. knows that you have this amount with you because every okay, is also okay. with the same bank. And please understand yeah, yeah, banks okay. earn much more on insurance products and a lot of other products as commission mm. than FDs. So mm. they will yeah. call you. And please yeah. imagine the situation where you're getting five calls a day. It can get super annoying. Mm. And mm. you cannot put it on DND because this is your bank calling you. So it's not like mm. some random salesperson is calling you with a real estate deal. So mm. that problem is still not solved. And that is why I prefer liquid funds over FDs mm. because you're taking the money out of the banking records and putting it in a mutual fund. Second okay, question is okay, which okay. mutual fund? So I do understand mm. that you may not be aware of what mutual funds do at this stage, but mm -hmm. liquid funds as a category is generally safe. Mm. I mean, nine out of 10 times, you will not find any problem in liquid funds. So if you pick mm -hmm. any liquid fund of, let's say the top five, top 10 fund houses, more or mm -hmm. less the returns and risk is the same. So you don't have to be mm -hmm. really savvy or analyze a lot of things to figure out which liquid fund is the best. There is nothing in that mm -hmm. sense. It is like you're parking money. So yeah, you could yeah, just yeah. pick the top five fund houses. You could just mm -hmm. go by the bigger names that you are aware of and just mm -hmm. invest in mm -hmm. those liquid funds without really mm -hmm. worrying about which one will be the best in that sense. And okay, yes, okay. liquid funds are debt funds. They're only going to give you mm -hmm. fixed income rate of return. But I'm saying mm -hmm. this as the first step, just okay. for a temporary period of time, because what you need to do with this money will need planning. And that will, okay, that will go into a lot of details. Till that time, yeah, till the yeah. time you are sure what to do, instead of mm -hmm. keeping the money in the bank, you put it in the liquid funds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. The next step is that uh, almost all private sector banks actually have their own mutual funds as well. So uh, one thing the uh, wealth managers do is maybe yeah, as you said, call them up and uh, ask them to do it. But I also found out that um, usually wealth managers uh, actually. Uh, encourage uh, these kind of customers to go in for a ULIP uh, kind of thing, you know, and, or, or even a traditional one. Um, and then they say that, uh, you know, you will get this much of amount of money, plus you'll get insurance, in spite of the fact that you might end up having taken a term loan, ter you know, term insurance at, uh, uh, itself. Yeah. So yeah. how does one navigate through this uh, issue? And uh, what are the pitfalls for a ULIP and uh, uh, when, when, you, when you talk to the wealth manager, he, he actually doesn't say much uh, about uh, mutual fund, but he becomes silent. He doesn't really uh, encourage you to buy that. Yeah, that's because how the, the compensation structure works for these private wealth RMs is like that. So they have their targets mm -hmm. to achieve in terms mm -hmm. of revenue and they will mm -hmm. obviously look for products where revenue is higher. So a ULIP mm. revenue could be higher than a, a debt fund commission that they're getting from the mutual fund. Mm -hmm. So they will obviously mm -hmm. try to nudge you towards a higher commission product for them, yeah. which is how yeah. they get compensated. I mean, we, we can't do anything about that. Mm. However, the, the person who's investing, the person with the money, they need to kind of be very, very conscious of A, whether the, you need insurance. B, what kind of insurance? So insurance planning itself is a is a long process. Yeah, so I'm yeah, not sure yeah, whether yeah. they themselves would know anything about no, it. That's almost. why I said earlier, yeah. don't take any big decision immediately. And big decisions okay. include investing into some products, investing into some mm -hmm. mutual funds, nothing. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. Because at some okay. point, what I always would recommend to someone like this is, please mm -hmm. take an advice of a financial planner. Please take okay. advice mm -hmm. of someone who will help you navigate. Because... Yeah. Even if you're savvy, even if you know finance, even if you know markets, mm. this money is big, yeah. probably going to be like 80%, 90% of your net worth at this point. And this could mm. be significant mm. for how the future of your life is going to be. So I would always yeah. suggest, even if you're savvy, take the help of a, a financial planner who kind of will help you navigate better. At that stage, mm -hmm. if insurance mm -hmm. is required, you can always buy it. You don't have to do it on the day one. So yeah, yeah, you can yeah, yeah. tell the bank RMs that we will come back to you when I am very mm -hmm. sure at this point, mm -hmm. you have to be firm. It's not easy. I understand. But you have to be firm okay. saying no big decisions. I'll get back to you. So buy yourself some time. Uh, don't mm -hmm. be in this fear of missing out kind of a mode. Nobody's going anywhere. All products are going to be there. Move okay. to liquid fund. 
do financial planning then decide what to do with all this money that you have so uh, what's step number 3 after you move uh, all, all all that went fall into uh, a liquid fund then as i said you would probably want to advise a, a financial planner see in your circle if anybody knows a good financial planner go through sebi website and see who are the registered investment advisors who can help you with this uh, mm -hmm. find a good advisor slash planner who will then mm -hmm. sit through all the numbers that you have because this is almost mm -hmm. like a restart of your financial life you had a lot yeah, of things yeah. you were doing and suddenly there is so much money coming in so the standard of living can change everything can change okay. aspirations can change yeah. so the literally yeah. doing this exercise of what are my life goals now what do you want mm -hmm. to achieve in life that is the starting point mm -hmm. if you are not very sure at this point what you want then you don't take mm -hmm. investment decision also what okay. i genuinely believe is investment mm -hmm. of money in any product to get any return is just a tool mm -hmm. to live your optimum life you need to be a little more clear about what you want to do and once you know okay, okay, okay. a lot of people have clarity mm -hmm. they'll be like you know what 30% of this money i want to use for giving back to society to relatives etc mm -hmm. right so that's good that's one okay. 30% uh, 20% okay. of this money i will use for my children's higher education and wedding expenses etc so that's again one more bucket mm -hmm. uh 30% of this money i will use for a new business i am contemplating for example mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. part i will use for my retirement so these are discussions that you will need to have with a planner who will put mm -hmm. all these numbers into a financial plan and then mm -hmm. kind of see a very important question again is will this money last mm -hmm. you have to ensure that this money will last for the rest of your life as you uh, rightly said at the beginning of this discussion that people squander away this money there is a there is a research yeah. which says that majority of the people who get windfall money lose it mm -hmm. in few years they will take some immature decision and lose that money it happens with you know okay. these kbc winners and all kon baniga crore pati yeah, yeah 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 they yeah, don't yeah, actually yeah, yeah. become wealthy after a point so that's where you yeah. need help that's my that's where an mm -hmm. advisor can come in who's very objective mm -hmm. he or she is not in your emotional ride he or she is going to keep telling you the right things and then the decision will be taken so if let's say the financial planning discussion starts and you're like i am not very sure what do i need to do with this money you can start small you can say okay are you sure that some part of this money goes for your children's education most mm -hmm. answer will be yes they do want to do something mm -hmm. for the children at least let's start mm -hmm. investing for that so then you decide okay 10 year is when the higher education for the first child comes in 15 years mm -hmm. is when the second child higher education comes in let's say which product will mm -hmm. be good for that so maybe you'll invest in mutual funds for that so at least that decision making will come from whatever your life goals are until the time mm -hmm. you are not sure of it let the money lie in liquid funds there is no downside mm -hmm. of it there is no side effect okay. as in when you are mm -hmm. sure you can invest it over mm -hmm. a period of time it anyways okay. works well when you invest uh, part by yeah. part into long term equity also so the mm -hmm. second uh, the third step would be i would suggest is consult a good financial planner slash okay. advisor we do that a okay. lot okay 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 uh one thing uh, that i found out is that um, assuming um, this particular person has debt for example a, a housing loan or a car loan right or any kind of small loan that he has taken for some personal use it could be like uh, you know personal loan at a very high at a slightly higher rate of interest um when he gets this kind of money should he Uh, allocate uh, a certain amount of money to to actually um, close all these loans, and then use the rest for uh, savings or whatever. Again, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to deflect a direct answer, but it would depend a lot on the numbers. It would depend a lot on how the rest of the life is looking like. What are okay. the aspirations? Where will the money be needed? Because there is a possibility that you can invest this money in. some assets which can give you a higher rate of return than a home loan for example so in that okay, case okay. financially speaking it is not prudent to pay off the loan you can still keep okay. it and can ensure that you generate cash flow for that from somewhere else so that you mm -hmm, don't have any mm -hmm. cash flow issue so all that can be planned well so okay, when you okay. with a financial planner you mm -hmm. give all the data you say these are my loans these are mm -hmm. my current assets these are my aspirations mm -hmm. that open discussion mm -hmm. 
one hmm. of the possibilities is you know what you have these credit card loan spending you have these personal hmm. loans pay yeah, that off yeah. because they're high cost you're probably paying yeah. 14 15 percent on that but yeah, home yeah, loan yeah. may not be the first loan that you want to repay because okay. you still have your cash flow that you can pay it off and there are assets to do that so home mm-hmm. loans and educational loan may still remain as a mm-hmm. binary answer if i were to give you but a mm-hmm. lot of it will depend on the planning process itself okay okay uh, the um, the amount of money that uh, one ends up getting uh, is there anything in the current budget that was announced on feb 1st which will actually help you in any manner I mean, it could be capital gains or any other 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 instruments that the government is referring to in the budget not really nothing has changed on the capital gain mm-hmm. exemption side mm-hmm. or anything of that sort in mm-hmm. fact if this money going forward let's, let's assume the situation is happening 10 years later for someone then if mm-hmm. this money is coming from some insurance policy it actually could get taxed also other than okay. that it doesn't change anything about what to do with it so for example mm-hmm. if you earn this money from capital gain whatever mm-hmm. the avenues to save capital gain it was existing earlier that will continue to exist the only mm-hmm. different point is if you invest this money in a, a luxurious house costing 10 crores and above then you will mm-hmm. not be able to get the capital gain benefit on that oh, but again okay. it's a okay. very specific provision in a specific use case it may not mm-hmm. be it may not be applicable to everybody who has got windfall money Okay, okay, okay. Do you also think that uh, because I have received this amount of money, uh, I should also use it for going on a foreign trip or a domestic trip or buying another car? Do you think uh, one should also include that in the uh, in this entire uh, financial totally, plan? Totally depends. Totally depends on the, the the family which has received it. I'm saying family because usually mm. the money is used at a family level. So even if yeah, let's say yeah. you individually receive it, you're not thinking yeah. about just you. You're also thinking about uh, parents and siblings yeah, and yeah. wife and kids yeah. and all that, right? So, yeah, at a family level, you suddenly will need to put all of this down, right? As I said earlier, it's like a new life almost. Yeah, think yeah. of it yeah. as a yeah. game where you suddenly got some superpower, and now you're like, yeah. okay, now what do we do? So you list down everything. You can you can list down whatever you kind of had aspirations about always, but money was not available. But mm-hmm. as I said, don't take any decisions in the first few days. Don't yeah, say, okay, let me do a foreign world trip. Because the yeah. financial planning process is important. You need to put all yeah. this and see yeah. whether yeah. the money will last eventually when you're 100 years old. Why mm-hmm. Why do we say that people squander away money? Because they've not done the planning. They don't realize that mm-hmm. if I use this money in this way, what is the impact of this decision in my future wealth? So that's the financial mm-hmm. planning process. That is where... You need to do the planning. And in that mm. plan, you will put in all this expense also. You will say, mm. every year I'll do a, a a family tour where I'll spend uh, 20 lakh rupees, for example, just in number. Mm. Mm. You put it and you see, okay, what is the impact of all this in your future wealth? And if everything okay. is looking okay. fine and the future is still absolutely good, no problem. Mm-hmm. Please live your life the way you want. But okay. the if financial I, planning yeah. process will tell you that, oh, if you mm. do this, then you mm-hmm. probably will run out of money at the age of 81. Mm-hmm. And you may still be around and you may still have a few years to survive. So that's the cause yeah. and impact at a good yeah. financial plan. Yeah. You know, uh, I should have asked you this question first. Uh, what should uh, a person who has got a windfall tell the financial planner? Uh, everything. I mean, a financial planner is like your family doctor in that sense. You should disclose everything. You should disclose your fears. Mm-hmm. You should disclose the emotions you're going through because a good financial planner is a, why do we call it personal finance? It's personal. It's very, very personal. Yeah, Money yeah, is a yeah, very yeah. emotional thing. We are not, we are not, mm-hmm. we are talking about very uh, private emotions, literally. So you need to have someone who trusts yeah. you trust. That's the first thing. Yeah. And then you say yeah. everything. I have, I have the fear of my family members suddenly calling me and asking for money. You should disclose all the fears, all the aspirations, mm-hmm. all the plans mm-hmm. you have. Like throw mm-hmm. it all on the table. Then let's okay. pick okay. one by one, put it in okay. a plan because everything is numbers mm-hmm. eventually. You need numbers mm-hmm. and data to give you an objective answer to your questions. It can't be an okay. emotional okay. question. It's not like, should I go for a family trip or should I give it to an NGO? Let the numbers mm-hmm. speak. Let the data tell you what 
is is both possible is only one possible all this you throw out to the financial planner bring it on mm-hmm. the table and mm-hmm. not just you ask your children if mm-hmm. they are adult enough ask your spouse what do they want to do with this mm-hmm. because sometimes what you mm-hmm. want to do is not what probably your spouse wants to do because they may be yeah. thinking yeah. differently yeah. you want a family trip but they may yeah. not yeah. they may like oh let's not jump yeah. in the yeah. air yeah. let's go to them put all of this yeah. into a discussion and take one piece mm-hmm. at a time put it into a plan and then you will get a lot mm-hmm. of clarity in fact a good financial planner doesn't give mm-hmm. you solutions to anything they will just uh, kind of reorganize everything in front of you and you will get okay. a lot of clarity about what you want that's it we are showing a mirror we like yeah, this yeah, is what yeah. you want to do this is how it will look like now you decide whether you want to change anything we are not here to yeah. tell you how to live your life you know um, one thing that i also realized is that uh, um assuming that you know mutual fund of course uh, you would like to invest in that but there are people who also aspire to own uh, equity shares of individual companies and don't invest in the stock market and uh, should that be also part of the financial planning uh, or is it too risky to do it no it's it's it, i mean it is in in a standalone case equity is risky you can lose money no doubt about it but mm-hmm. should mm-hmm. this particular family do it or not again is a function of what they want to do in their respective lives so when they have that okay. financial plan ready based on the mm-hmm. financial plan the investment plan will come in i'll give you an example okay. what mm-hmm. what ideally should happen is you will put mm-hmm. this amount into two buckets one okay. will be a core bucket a mm-hmm. core investment portfolio that is for your ideal life that you want to live which will include mm-hmm. all the non negotiables like for example mm-hmm. children's education their wedding your retirement your health your travel your business your mm-hmm. personal aspirations this is all core you mm-hmm. want all this to live a good life so you yeah, first yeah. build an, in, an investment portfolio for all these core goals if mm-hmm. something is left you can create mm-hmm. what is called as a satellite portfolio okay. satellite portfolio means you have the ability to take risk in that portfolio and even if that oh. portfolio becomes zero for whatever reason okay. your okay. core life is not getting affected so this is mm-hmm. what the planning helps us in identifying out of okay. 100 rupees that i have received can mm-hmm. i invest 50 rupees in startups let's say that i want to do mm-hmm. it let the numbers mm-hmm. give you the answer and maybe the numbers okay. will tell you you know what 50 you can't invest in startups at this stage mm-hmm. but 20 mm-hmm. you can then you can okay. go into okay. a discussion of okay how to invest in startups who can help you with that so that's an investment decision mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. i would still suggest that a holistic financial planning should be done first and then mm-hmm. you can see how much risky assets you can build and it's absolutely fine to create risky assets and it's absolutely fine that uh, somebody has the aspiration of that but it should not be at the cost of your core goals okay okay thank you mr anand thank you very much for sharing all these tips and i'm thank sure you. all those who listen to this uh, watch this video will be it will it will really help them thank you very much subscribe to the federal's youtube page for more interesting updates